Y'all, wedding shower weekend has come and go. It was simultaneously the most fun and chaotic and beautiful ceremony of love and uh, I don't think I'll ever be over it. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing all of the details and the behind the scenes info of our wedding shower. I'm going to be sharing with you all of the things that went perfect and amazing, but also all of the things that didn't go so great because even the best laid plans don't go according to plan. And ultimately, I'm gonna talk to y'all about what I think intentional planning means, not only when it comes to planning events, but even to just planning our day-to-day -day lives. Now you're probably wondering, Lauren, what the heck is a wedding shower? Aren't you getting married in August? Like what is going on here? So yes, we are having our official wedding in New York in August of 2022, but we both come from big families and we're both from the South. So we decided to host a wedding celebration without any sort of formal ceremony as a way to get our extended family and friends able to come and celebrate us here down South. We wanted it to be super intentional, super untraditional, filled with things that really represent both of us as a couple. And it gave our family a time and place to come and celebrate us if they are unable to make it to New York. And like I said, honestly, it was one of the best weekends ever. I don't know how we'll top it, but here's what it looked like. Okay, so John Michael and I aren't like very traditional people in a lot of the essence of the word. You know, I think that's what makes our love story so fun and so beautiful. So our weekend actually started on Thursday night. So we were down south at my parents' house and we actually rented a house close by to where my parents lived and we called that the bridal party house. So all of our bridesmaids, our groomsmen, our guest of honor, people who are gonna be really crucial to the wedding, we wanted to get together beforehand. Again, I keep saying how small and intimate our wedding in August is going to be. And something that's really important for both John Michael and I is that because we come from two very different friend groups who like don't know each other, we wanted all of them to have met and know each other prior to our wedding, come together and not just be like, oh, okay, we're paired together in a wedding, like fun, but actually create friendships of their own, create relationships, create inside jokes with one another. Most of those people started arriving Thursday night. We kept it very chill. We hung out at our house, played some games. We made some food. It was Cinco de Mayo, so we had some margaritas and kind of just let everybody trickle in. The fun really started on Friday. Now on Friday, we broke up into two separate groups. So we had one group who went and played golf, John Michael's a big golfer. And then we had a, another group that was with me and we went on a boat for half of the day. Now, this one was really fun. Now listen, I love a theme. I love what we were doing. So we kind of did a Beyonce theme. So all the songs we played were Beyonce. And I even had some really exciting planner friends join us for this weekend. And so I do have to give a special shout out to Jonathan who, I lovingly refer to as J-Bay from J-Bay Plans It, who made custom drink pouches, each with had a Beyonce saying on them for the boat. Again, it just made it a little bit more fun and got people a little bit more hype for while we were there. After being out all day, we decided to stay in for the night. We did a big barbecue. The house that we were staying at was really nice. It had a pool, and so we just did a little bit of a pool party. We ate burgers and hot dogs and had, our, had a really good time. All of my favorite parts have to do with just the little intentional moments of being able to step back and see, oh my goodness, here's my childhood best friend and one of John Michael's college best friends talking and hanging out and laughing with one another. It's seeing how taking all of our friends who are super social, I don't know if you can tell, I'm pretty extroverted. So a lot of my friends are also pretty extroverted and just seeing them mix and mingle, hearing about their lives. I also was really thankful for this time before like the actual celebration that we had on Saturday, because on Saturday, I really feel like I didn't see a lot of my friends because I was talking to members and my parents' friends and things like that. Because we are in a beach town and the beach also means so much to me, we wanted to make sure that we spent some time on the beach. So we spent the morning on the beach. We we're there from like 10 a.m. to like 1 p.m everybody was invited to this so we went to the beach right across from the house that we were staying at and that's again when a lot of the guests had started to arrive friday night so saturday morning we were there it was so fun i got to see like all my little cousins came out and so they were on the beach hanging out and playing with everybody we played music we just kept it really low-key 
Everyone pulls up a chair, you sit, you talk, you get to hang out. And then later that day, that's when we had the actual celebration here at my parents' house. So my favorite food in the world is pizza. We had a pizza truck. I felt like this was such a highlight for everyone who was there. Now the pizza truck itself served beer and wine, and then we had also had a cooler full of seltzers for anybody who wanted those. But on the truck itself, we did appetizers, they did a salad, and then obviously they did pizza. But at a lot of weddings or like a lot of celebrations we go to, we see people who have signature cocktails. You know, the bride does one and the groom does one. So instead, we decided to go ahead and do signature pizzas. So I had like a her pizza, which was all of what I love on pizza. So like onions and sausage and cheese and all these different things. And then we had a his pizza and it was all of everything that John Michael loves on pizza. We also did have a couple other options. So there was a lot for people to choose from in terms of pizza. I'm gluten free. So there were a bunch of gluten free options. We have family members who are vegetarian and vegan. So they had options as well. We had a giant crossword puzzle. I don't know if any of y'all are big Wordle fans or you do the crossword, but John Michael does the Wordle and a crossword pretty much every single day. And it's something that he's always shared with his family. It was from an Etsy seller, but he came up with all of the clues and all of the answers. And then she formulated the crossword puzzle itself. And then all we had to do is we printed it out. We put plexiglass on top of it. Again, I didn't do this, John Michael did this. Our thought behind this is that we wanted every single person who was at the celebration to know one answer, at least one answer, but not everybody knew every answer. So you had to work with other people who are at the party to complete and figure out what the puzzle is going to be. And truly, truly up until like the last 15 minutes, there was still one answer that they couldn't get. And I think at the end, John Michael did finally help them. A couple other things is I am also a major words of affirmations girl. And so we had a guest book. We had prompts for people to fill out. And so people took a selfie with a Polaroid camera that we had there. And then they used one of the prompts to go ahead and sign our guest book. Hello everyone. How did you like the celebration? It was awesome. We had a great time. <laughs> We're both working. Legalize being black. I had to bring a little bit of planner, a little bit of fun to the celebration as well. So we did also have a DIY reusable cup. So I had white stadium cups and a million die cut stickers that you could use to go ahead and create your own cup. Y'all know how much we love Minnie now. Unfortunately, while Minnie was not there at the party because she would have run up to everyone and she would have been so chaotic. We did want to make sure that she was included. So our favor for the night were little doggy bags with some of her favorite treats. And we asked people to take them home. It said from our pup to yours. Because we're in the low country, we also had branded bottles of bug spray and koozies as well. So this was the blue that we were going for on the weekend, but our koozie says Hilton Head Island, Lauren and John Michael, let's party. And then the back has a little bit of a beach scene. And then these were our bug spray. It says Lauren and John Michael. And then at the bottom, it says be smitten, not bitten. All the little details are what matter. I think all the little details are really where you're allowed to personalize things for yourself. And I feel like all the details that we incorporated really did speak to who we are as a couple and all of the things that we love and that we cherish. Now from Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and all of those places, all you see are the highlights, right? All you see are everything that went perfect. Ultimately, at the end of the day, everything always does turn out well. Things never go according to plan, but I also do think it's important to like talk about some of those things. Even though this was ended up being so perfect for us, the morning was not. So to give you guys a little bit of insight into what that day looked like at 2.30 in the morning on Saturday, our DJ for the day actually went ahead and canceled. I am not going to get into that because it will just get me mad and all excited again. So we spent the entire morning trying to find a DJ. If anybody has worked in events, we worked with an amazing coordinator, Kylie, and somehow she pulled magic and she got an amazing DJ who was able to come and MC the day for us. It ended up being way better than we ever thought. We didn't think that we would dance at all. We thought it would just like be mixing and mingling and he had us out there 
having a dance party in the middle of the day on my parents, in my parents' front yard. So just absolutely incredible. So also one of the groomsmen who was giving a speech lost his phone early in the day that had his speech on it. And so while he is also frantically looking for his phone, which is obviously the more, more important than his speech, that also went wrong. John Michael forgot his clothes, like the clothes he was supposed to wear for this party, you know, that we'd planned out, we made all great forgot the clothes. But like everyone says, when it comes to an event, things always go wrong. Ultimately, it all worked out. The party kind of lasted till like 8 p.m. At 8 p.m. we had rented a party bus for all of us to hang out on and to, you know, do a little bit of an after party on. My parents um, and some of my family members and our friends decided to stay back here at their house. Sunday was Mother's Day and so we also did end up hosting a Mother's Day brunch for anybody who was still left in town. You know, my mom gave a little toast during our weekend. And one of the things that she said is that this weekend there were a bunch of graduations and it was Mother's Day, it was people's birthdays. And we all know that there were other weddings and celebrations that people could have attended, but they chose to spend the weekend celebrating with us. And honestly, I think that's just something that hits me to my core, that all of these people who have loved us and supported us so long took the time to come and to be with us and to celebrate us and to, like my mom said, to spend the time with us. And you know, if I had to pick one word for this weekend, it would be intentional. And I say intentional because not only was it very intentionally planned, there was dedicated intentional time to speak with people. All of the details were very intentional. I think when it comes to intentional planning, it's a combination of all of those different things. And truly it is just taking time at the beginning, whether it's at the beginning of your week, if you're planning in a planner, it's at the beginning of sitting down to plan an event. If it is at an event or even if it's if it's just planning out your day it is taking that time up front and recognizing what is most important to you when i look back at this wedding shower weekend the most important things to john michael and i were number one that we were getting to spend time with each and every single person who was there i think number two was that everything that was a part of this weekend represented who we are as individuals as well as who we are as a couple. And so every decision that we made, every idea that we had, we looked at it through that lens. Does it allow us to have time to spend with people who are there? And does it represent us as a couple? And here's the thing is that we're never going to know what that outcome is, right? I could have and tried and did plan for what I thought would be every scenario or every anticipated outcome for this weekend. And so many things still went wrong. And so many things didn't happen the way that I thought they would. And so many things just didn't play out the way that I thought that they would play out. Like, honestly, I was like, no one's gonna do a crossword puzzle and it ended up being the biggest hit of the night. Despite all of those things not happening the way that I thought they would, it still ended up being so perfect for us. And I know it's because we had these guiding principles. And I now know that as I continue to make plans for myself on the day-to-day -day in my planner, as I continue to make my goals year after year, and as you know, we still have to plan this wedding in August. Listen to my dogs wanting to ruin all the great things that I wanted to share with y'all. But because we had these guideposts in place, ultimately everything worked out perfectly. You know, y'all, I tell you all the time, the first thing to do when you get a planner is to put an intention in it so you know how and why you're using the planner every single time you open the planner. Why don't we do the same thing with our plans? Even if it's how we want our shower to go or what we want our day to look like, just set a simple intention, whether it's written down, whether it's something you follow to your tea or just something you're saying to yourself throughout the day. Ultimately, I think intentional planning can be one of the most beautiful aspects of planning. And yes, are the to-do list important? And yes, are all of the little type A things we do important? But I think intentional planning is that secret sauce of just writing down our plans and having a plan and truly living out our plans, our aspirations, and our dreams. That got a little deep. <laughs> Y'all know that happens to here. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of what our wedding shower weekend looked like. I can't tell you, I feel like I've said it a million times in this video, just how amazing it was. John Michael and I are so, so thankful to be loved and to be supported by so many people, including the Plan With Lore community. 
We are feeling all the love and all of the hugs in this super special season of life right now. Let me know in the comments below about what y'all think about our wedding shower weekend and your thoughts on intentional planning. So that is what I have for you guys here today. I will see y'all in my next video. <laughs> Bye y'all.